Hi, my name is Pam Sherratt and I'm going to talk about growing turf in shade. Turf grasses are adapted to growing in full sunlight. They need sunlight for photosynthesis, um, which means that they need sunlight to produce sugars and carbohydrates for growth. We're going to talk briefly about two types of light. Um, that both of these are equally important. The intensity of the light that the turf receives is important and the quality of the light is also important. Um, light become, comes from solar energy from the sun and the intensity of the sun is at its greatest at the equator and then the further away from the equator the country or the location is and um, the less the light intensity is. So you can see here that Columbus, Ohio at 40 degrees is um, the light intensity is less than it is at the equator. So this is just a pictorial of that. You can see at zero degrees there the equator. The, the yellow arrow to the right shows that the light intensity does not have to pass through as much of the environment and the atmosphere to get to the Earth's surface. And you can see Columbus there at 40 degrees. That yellow arrow shows that the light has to travel through um, much greater atmosphere to reach the Earth's surface at that point so the intensity is not as great. So depending on where you are in the world depends on the light intensity that you receive and obviously that's seasonal so for example if you look at this I have if this was an Earth globe and I have scooted um, Britain across Britain is on the same latitude as the Hudson Bay and you can see that Columbus there in Ohio that would be on the same latitude as Madrid in southern Spain so in the winter months there's very uh, long days um, in the Columbus compared to uh, Britain Britain only has about four or five hours of sunlight during the winter months and there's more in Columbus and then in the summer Britain has longer day lengths um, the days are it uh, doesn't go dark until 10 and 11 o'clock at night in that northern um, in the northern countries compared to Columbus. So depending on where you are in the world and what time of year it is will depend upon the day length and the light intensity. So here's just some different day lengths from around the world. You can see that Anchorage and Alaska uh, during December only gets about five hours of sunlight a day compared to 18 hours of sunlight during the summer months and you can see there Columbus about nine hours of sunlight during the winter and about 14 to 15 hours of sunlight during the summer. The light quality is also really important. Um, the light quality that's needed for photosynthesis is in the 400 to 700 nanometer range the same as the visible light and if a turf is grown in shade under trees this can be a problem because the that specific um, range of light that's needed for photosynthesis can be filtered out by the trees so shade shade under trees is actually worse for the turf than shade next to a hard surface because the the light wavelength that the turf grass needs is actually filtered out by the trees so shade in stadiums is a, is a problem a lot of the newer stadiums that go in are very tall, very high, they have roofs on them, um, they have maximum capacity seating, so this casts a lot of shade onto the field surface and obviously turf grasses need are adapted to growing in full sunlight and they do need five to six hours of direct light a day in order to grow healthily. And uh, So you can see here that shade would be a problem. This is a diagram showing the type of shade patterns that, that happen on winter sports pitches in England during the winter months. You can see by 3 o'clock in the afternoon that more or less the whole field is in shade. Because in the winter months um, the sun is much lower in the sky, in the southern sky, so it, it very often goes behind um, the stadium structure by mid-afternoon. This is from the Cincinnati Reds showing the same type of thing in, in the winter months where the sun is very low in the southern sky and it, it rises in the east and it sets in the west but it sometimes barely makes it high enough in the sky to reach into the stadium. And again even on stadiums that don't have very high um, seating there can still be shade issues especially during the winter months. 
Um, this is the Reebok Stadium in England and the Manchester City Stadium there, bottom right. And the, this is Arsenal Stadium again, showing the shade patterns on the field. What are the effects on the turf grass? Well, first of all, the turf grasses try to grow up towards the light, so they have much thinner leaves. They weigh less um, because they are kind of straggly and leggy. Um, there's a reduced shoot density and, obvious, and also um, reduced roots, so the roots are very shallow, the shoots are very sh leggy, they may go yellow, there's less branching or tillering of those shoots. And then in addition to the effects on the plant, there's also effects in the micro environment in that the stadium uh, areas that are shady will stay wet for much longer. They are more prone to diseases and algae. Uh, that surface will, will divot more. Divots are chunks of grass that are kicked out during a game. It will divot more. And there may actually be loss of grass cover, grass death. One of the big problems is in those areas that it will stay wet longer. So whether it's rain and irrigation or whether it's the morning dew, that water will not move from that surface because the air is still and the, there isn't any sunlight to burn that water off. This is what turf grass looks like in full sun on the left and this is what turf grass will look like in 90% shade. So turf grasses do really like to grow in sun. Uh, some are adapted as we'll talk about but ideally um, they like to grow in full sun. Shallow rooting is the number one. The grass will become very leggy which means tall and thin and it will have very reduced root mass. As you can see here the roots just pull right out. So if a, an athlete was trying to do a sliding tackle or was trying to cut during a football game it would it would rip out really quickly because the roots aren't there. Algae is something that forms this black crust black slime on the surface is algae. Algae will form, mosses will form, the turf loses density, it becomes yellow and leggy as you can see by this picture. And then the surface uh, becomes like this, very slick and slimy, that algae will make the surface very slippery which is not conducive to any type of sport. Very difficult to grow grass as you can see here again, especially on the sidelines that get the most shade. The areas closest to the seats are usually in shade most often and you can see that it's the turf cover is lost in those areas. On a soccer field this is where the linesmen would run up and down the sidelines so in addition to the loss of grass from shade there's loss of grass from heavy traffic from players standing on the field, coaches, uh, linesmen running up and down, referees running up and down etc. And again you can see the closest, the area closest to the the seats are the ones that get uh, the worst symptoms. In addition, because it's wet and stagnant air, um, it's more prone to diseases. Leaf spot is a common disease in shaded stadiums. This particular disease thrives in wet, humid, warm conditions, which is typical shaded conditions. Certain grasses will also thrive in shaded conditions. Annual bluegrass and rough bluegrass are two weed grasses that can grow in shade and will easily outcompete some of the other grasses in a shaded environment. So how do you grow turf in shade? Um, the stadiums are being built taller, they, ha they have roofs on them to protect the fans from the elements. So what does a field manager do to grow turf successfully in shade? The first thing they do is to choose shade tolerant grasses. Some grasses can grow better in shade than others. The most popular ones, the most common ones that do well are the fescues, the tall and fine fescues. As I said, the rough and the annual bluegrass are actually weeds, um, and the supine bluegrass is a is a relative of that. St. Augustine grass is a warm season grass. Those three, those three types of grasses do fairly well in shade. And then the other grasses that we use on sports fields, it's up to the field manager to select cultivars or varieties of those other grasses that do the best. So for example with Kentucky bluegrass where there's close to a hundred different varieties available the field manager must sort through those and find out which one of those is the most shade tolerant. One of the things that happens on the new stadiums that are built is transparent or clear roof panels as you can see here at Manchester United and at Manchester City Stadium. Both of them have these transparent um, 
roofs so that sunlight can get through onto the field. Another thing is louvre or slatted windows. That's done purely to try and increase the air movement so that the field does not stay wet. Field managers can also use portable fans and portable heaters to try and dry those surfaces out. One of the ways that we can um, increase the turf health is to slightly raise the mowing height in the shaded areas. Slightly rowing the mowing height allows that grass more of an opportunity to photosynthesize. The more green tissue there is on that plant, the more healthy the plant is and the more the plant is able to photosynthesize and produce those sugars that it needs for growth. It's very important in shaded areas to be very judicious and to regulate water and fertilizer. Both of these factors, water and fertilizer, can cause huge problems in a shaded area if there's too much water applied. Everything we said earlier about the problems in shade is, is amplified. So diseases are more apparent, the leggy and the yellowing of the turf grass growth is more apparent, the slippery surface becomes worse. So really, you have to be really careful applying water to, to stadiums with shade and those areas in shade must receive far less water than the areas that are in full sun. The same with fertilizer. If the grass is overstimulated with nitrogen, again that can cause problems with leggy, lush, soft tissue, tissue growth and more diseases. Some stadiums um, will have a crew available that can actually remove dew first thing in the morning to try and alleviate disease and um, surface surface slick conditions from forming. Removing dew is done with brushes or hoses or a mower, uh, just any way to, to drag the water, physically drag the water off the surface of the leaf. It's really important in shaded areas to be, again, um, to regulate the use of plastic covers and tarps because anytime you cover grass with a plastic cover, you're going to trap water, humidity, and heat under there which again can cause problems with diseases. Growth blankets can be helpful. These are blankets that do allow light through and they can be helpful to try and promote some recovery in the shaded areas. The growth blankets um, help recovery by raising the temperatures a little bit, keeping people off those surfaces from using those surfaces and um, retaining a little bit of moisture if the sand or the soil underneath is dry. It's extremely important to open up the playing surface with a spiker or an aerator or something like that to make sure that air gets into that immediate surface, again with the goal to drying that surface out, stop it from becoming slippery. Plant growth -like regulators are sometimes used. They are used in the United States and they're becoming more common in Europe. Using a plant growth regulator, which is a hormone, it prevents that leggy, lush growth from occurring and it doesn't stop grasses from dying in shade but it does prolong the longevity of that grass so if a grass typically might die over a period of several weeks in shade um, it might not die for you know uh, several months in shade if it's been treated with a plant growth regulator that tries to regulate that will regulate that long leggy lush soft growth Some stadiums now that have severe shade issues along the sidelines and in the corners, for example, are starting to use synthetic or artificial turf in those areas. This is a picture from Manchester City Stadium that was taken in 2013. You can see the linesman's runs and the areas behind the goal have been installed with synthetic turf. One of the practices that's very common now in Europe and is becoming more common in the United States is the use of supplemental light racks. These were originally used in greenhouses for cut flower production and they've been adapted um, for um, turf grass growth in stadiums. These are portable light racks that can be moved across the field and they have light bulbs in them, high in uh, intensity light bulbs in them that will, um, they won't create exactly the same light spectrum as sunlight. Uh, nothing can do that but sunlight, but they, they're pretty close and they will allow the grasses to grow year-round uh, under these specific light racks. 
You can see here that if you're looking at wavelength and the type of light that the plant needs, which is the orange light, the orange light, the sunlight, the high is obviously the best intensity and the best quality of sunlight. But there are some bulbs like the high um, high intensity bulbs there in purple that they aren't as good as sunlight, but they're much better than perhaps some of the other light bulbs that are out there. And then uh, this this again is Manchester City Stadium, and you can see that these light racks um, can reach right the way across the stadium, and they've been they've allowed the field manager to pretty much grow grass year round, even in the winter months. Some of them are doing some innovative things like using them in conduction with grow blankets to try and uh, maximise the amount of sunlight that hits the surface. And not just football stadiums, but this is a picture of Wimbledon, which is the All England Lawn Tennis Club, where the, um, where the tennis tournament is held each year on grass courts. And again, they have these portable light racks. Um, kind of a cool picture just showing that uh, when the electric l electric lines come out to these light racks so that they don't cause problems on their field by having these electric lines running on the grass and killing the grass or marking the grass typically the electric lines are run on the same line as the painted line so that they don't cause problems on the grass and that concludes the slideshow about turf grasses growing in shade